unrest erupting nationwide over the killing of Breonna Taylor. The outrage sparked by the decision to not charge any of the officers directly in her death. Protests broke out last night across the country. In Sacramento, hundreds of protesters marched through downtown last night, stopping at the Capitol, DOCO, and the Sacramento County Jail. More protests also expected again later on tonight. In Louisville, where Taylor was killed, two police officers are recovering after being shot during last night's protests there. One officer was hit and treated for a leg wound. The other had surgery after being shot in the abdomen. The shootings marred by what had been a largely peaceful demonstration in a city where a state of emergency was declared in advance of the grand jury decision. CBS 13's Tarika Duncan is in Louisville. Officer down, right there. Officer down. It was a frantic scene around 8.30 last night after two Louisville police officers were shot. Interim Police Chief Robert Schroeder says a suspect is in custody. One is in alert and stable. The other officer is currently undergoing surgery and stable. Although protests started peacefully, some people set trash cans on fire. Around 100 people were arrested. The protest came after months of waiting for a decision in the killing of Breonna Taylor. Former Louisville detective Brett Hankison was indicted for his alleged conduct, but not related to Taylor's death. Kentucky Attorney General Daniel Cameron. The grand jury voted to return an indictment against Detective Hankinson for three counts of wanton endangerment for wantonly placing the three individuals in apartment three in danger. Hankinson was arrested and released on bail. The grand jury concluded that he wildly fired 10 shots and endangered the lives of a pregnant woman, a child, and a man who were in an apartment next to Taylor's. Officers Jonathan Mattingly and Miles Cosgrove, who the FBI says fired the fatal shot, will not face state criminal charges. The use of force by Mattingly and Cosgrove was justified to protect themselves. This justification bars us from pursuing criminal charges in Ms. Brianna Taylor's death. Taylor was killed on March 13th as police executed a search warrant for drugs and money. Neither were found. Her boyfriend, Kenneth Walker, says he believed the police were intruders, so he fired a single shot, which hit Mattingly in the thigh. Police returned fire. Six bullets hit Taylor. Did somebody kick in the door inside my girlfriend? Walker has maintained police did not identify themselves before they used a battering ram on the door. Cameron said the officers did knock and announce. That information was corroborated by another witness. Law professor Colin Miller has worked with Taylor's family. He says he believes the grand jury did not hear all of the evidence. And we have several witness accounts from neighboring apartments, the neighbors saying we never heard the police knock and announce. Taylor's family attorney Ben Crump called the decision to not charge any officer in Taylor's death outrageous and offensive. It continues to disrespect the black women that have permeated in American society since they first brought us here in 1619. Meanwhile, the FBI is conducting a separate investigation into the case, and one of the things it's examining is if police used false information to obtain the warrant in the first place.